Hello, and welcome to the Ketogenic Diet Show. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Mary Beauchamp, your host of the show today, a registered nurse and ketogenic diet coach. You can find me at www.ketogenicdietcoach.com. And today I'm very excited to introduce Rosa. I've seen her transformation and I just really was wanting to um, have her share that with everybody because it's been such a joy to watch her move through this process and I wanted her to share her story with you. So with no further ado, Rosa, welcome to this to this show and thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you for inviting me, Mary. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what to expect, but it sounded fun and, uh, you know, support keto all the way. Okay, awesome. I really appreciate you your willingness to be interviewed. I know it's it's not for everyone, and the world needs to hear your story. So I really am happy that you're here. Thank um, you. Yeah. So I'd love for you to just share a little bit about your history with your health and kind of what led up to this. What was your experience with dieting? If there was other diets that you had tried um, before you found keto, what what was the lead into this? Well, I, I've always had the issue with with wanting to lose weight because I always felt I was overweight. I mean, I was always like the chubby little kid. So this is, you know, going way, way back. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I always felt uncomfortable in my body just because it wasn't uh, what I thought it should be. You know, I wasn't as skinny as everybody or, or you know. Um, so my whole life was about wanting to lose weight. Um, I probably made more of an attempt, say, in high school. Um, and I, I did sports and, you know, ran around the track for miles or whatever. And um, it, was, it was just a battle mm. for me to try to lose weight all these years. Um, it, sometimes, you know, I could... Uh, like in college I could work out seven days a week you know be at the gym two hours a day or running laps or 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 whatever but I could never really get my weight to where I thought it ought to be you know I I was just kind of there was like a lower limit it seemed like Um, I mean I'm only 5'2 so my lowest, you know, growing up was like 150. I could never get below that, no matter what I did. So that's been my challenge. And and I later on, um, after college, I tried uh, things like raw foods only, you know, took some of those kind of courses, and, and then you're dehydrating things. And um, I tried, before that, I think I tried being vegetarian, going from a meat eater and um and it i still couldn't get below that little lower limit of 150 which in my mind was still you know heavy for for my height uh it it was just ongoing battle and i could do i could do all or nothing and and by that i mean i could fast for 25 days on nothing but half a grapefruit a day and I could do that, or I'd be into the food, but I couldn't do moderation. I don't know what it is about me. Uh, I that just didn't work. I, and everybody, of course, was helpfully telling me just eat less, which didn't really help me <laughs> because I couldn't. I couldn't do that. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I you know I could fast, but you can't do that forever. And sure, I'd lose twenty five pounds, but then I'd have to be in the world and eat normal and my normal was you know maybe overeat a little um so it, it's just kind of a torturous thing for all these years okay what am I doing now am I gonna fast am I gonna work out seven days a week to try to keep up with the calories I'm taking in and and then it gets to a point where you're like you realize you're not really having that many calories but or I wasn't, and I was still not losing weight. And and I've read about that, and you, you're probably familiar with that whole thing that 
you mess with your body and that's what it does. Right. So you tried a calorie restricted diet um, where you measured and weighed your food and really were very conscious of how many uh, how many calories you were eating every day. Yes, I was. I was in the Food Addicts Anonymous Food Addicts in Recovery program. I didn't. I did lose. Actually, I did lose weight, um, but it it wasn't long term possible for me to to keep up with it because there's so many things involved you know uh three meetings a week and you know five phone calls every day um and you know everywhere I went my little food scale went with me and it wasn't about the calories at that point but it was about you know four ounces of protein and eight ounces of salad and six ounces of veggie and this this was your meals and um and it does work as long as you can stay on it. And, but it is, I found it very stressful and um, kind of, you know, I had small children at the time and, and it's a lot time consuming to stay with the program. Um, so I did that a few years and, and then slowly I went back to not being in it and then, you know, I regained what weight I had lost. And that's that's the thing about losing weight and then it comes back and it comes back with the vengeance and then it's higher and and then I have in my head I had this upper limit I think when I hit like 178 is like oh I can't I can't let it go past that um so about two years ago I started looking at um keto food plans and kind of dabbling in it for for a year um and i lost weight and and it was um it was working but i wasn't weighing or measuring it was just the intention that i just cut back on carbs as much as i could and you know like avoided fruits except maybe some berries and it worked and and then my life got a little stressful you know, my mother had health issues and she you know she eventually passed but in in that time i had lost like 30 pounds and then I gained back like 20 of it just you know going through the stress with my mom and and different things um and so it you know was climbing back up and I was not okay with that and then that's when last year like I think it was the day after Easter my husband and I came and did your program kind of the online thing of going the full um bone broth protocol kind of thing that doing the the gut healing protocol yes as an intro to the into, into ketosis yes yeah yes great so that was a lot being more um more intent and conscious of exactly what i was doing and more uh, of a plan yes more of a, whereas the previous year it was more relaxed the i did keto and but i never checked my ketones i'm mm-hmm. pretty sure I was in ketosis just because of what I was eating, um, but I didn't check. I didn't check my blood. I, did, you know, it was just. But this was a lot more intentional, doing the whole bone broth. And at first, it was a little intimidating. It's like bone broth. Oh my God! You know, you got to cook it for three days or whatever. And um, we got an instant pot, and that made it a lot easier. But it still, it was still a little daunting at first. Um, but you know we stepped into it and and then after the bone broth fast it was like okay let's add food and and i you know i had like three or four scales at home so i just went back to weighing things and using the app and putting everything exactly that i had into the app then i could see where all of my nutrients were and um, and then, you know, the weight started coming off again, and, and I lost back the the 20 pounds I had regained and lost some more. So um, now I've been pretty much stable within like two, three pounds since late July. And mm, so that's like fantastic. It's about eight months now. Wow. And, and I'm just in this little like three pound range mm-hmm. down around. 126 pounds plus or minus 
Wow. Couple. Is this the first time you've ever been able to reach like below 130s? Um, I did. I did go there for a minute when I was in the food addicts program. I went down to 125. It's like, it's like when you dive to the bottom of the pool and you touch it and then it, you float right back up <laughs> uh-huh. and then you pop out and you go higher. Right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, briefly, but being able to maintain it like this, no, never. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible, Rosa. So inspiring. Yeah. So I'm curious, you mentioned that you always felt like the chubby kid. Do you, do you have a memory, like an age of, of like where you were or how old you were when you sort of had that realization within you that you were the chubby kid? How old do you think you were then? I'm, I'm thinking maybe kindergarten, first um, grade, so maybe six years old. Um, yeah, I remember I didn't want to wear dresses to school because going shopping for school clothes was a whole ordeal because, I mean, I have 10 siblings, so and I got a younger sister and older sisters, and we go shopping, and they could just put on anything. Mm. For me, it wasn't like that. I couldn't just grab a pair of pants. It wasn't going to fit. It dressed didn't look right. Um, oh. So... Yeah, at a, a, lot of at a young age. Things yeah. going on from yeah. a very young age. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm going to date myself because when I was like, I think by second grade, they changed the the laws. It used to be girls had to wear dresses to school. Uh-huh. You didn't have the option. and But that changed for whatever reason when I was like in second grade and it was like, yoo-hoo, no more ugly, ill-fitting dresses. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. not that the pants fit much better, but <laughs> but it, I, you know. You were happy not to have to wear dresses? Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's interesting. Wow. So it's been quite a journey. You've been so diligent and you've tried so many things. And it's just really exciting to see that something, you found something that is, feels sustainable for you. Definitely. And that's, that's really what I noticed with keto. If you, if you learn how to do it correctly... There's a lot of information out there, and, and, and sometimes it's hard to weed through it all to figure out how to actually implement this in your day-to-day. Um, but once you f- practice it enough to embody what it's all about, um, it does make your life easier in the kitchen. I feel that way for myself and for a lot of the people that I work with. Um, it's often very overwhelming at first, but then once you start practicing you know, every day it just gets easier and easier. And then at some point it just becomes part of your lifestyle. Um, and you don't need to always measure and weigh things. Um, but it it definitely is very, very helpful at the beginning. And I always encourage everybody to track their macros. Very crucial. Um, because if you do not get enough calories coming in, your metabolism is very smart and it will start to slow down. So, ketogenic diets are not low in calorie so I want to just make sure that everybody listen, listening to this um, knows that and you can actually do keto wrong um, there's a lot of ways to do it wrong and so I don't want you guys to anybody who's listening to fall into that trap so make sure you get help make sure you get support if you try it and it doesn't work for you then reach out there's so many places that you can find good sources resources medical, you know, journal articles and, and good information on, on how to do this. So get the support you need, get a coach if you need one and, um, stay committed to the process. Cause it really, it really does work. I've seen just so many benefits from the clients that I work with. Um, and I, yeah, I wanted to ask you also, Rosa, have you noticed any health changes in your, in your health since you started doing this? Well, for sure. The you know, immediate physical thing is I, I always had, my knees are like my weak point, and that probably has to do thanks to me do, doing those stairmasters for hours and hours when I was younger, and just banging my knees up. So, um, as the weight comes off, um, the knees issues and pains go away. I mean, I, I do work out a couple times a week, and I do a spin class, which is the gentlest thing you could do for your knees and still get you know aerobic. Uh, so definitely the thing with physical, I you know, it's a big improvement. Less pain. 
less yes. inflammation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Keto takes away all the inflammation and and it's like I don't snore anymore and ah. you know that's kind of directly correlated to weight. The when I weigh more, I'm more likely to snore and I haven't snored in months. Oh, great. <laughs> Which is great. Yeah, that also has something to do with inflammation as well. Just inflammation of the everywhere systemic right. inflammation basically so. right and and i sleep better because i don't snore um so i'm more rested mm. so i i feel good when i wake up as opposed to wake up tired because you, you weren't getting i wasn't getting enough oxygen and all the other things that go with that so physically it's 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 wonderful it's a mm. great improvement great yeah, if you don't sleep, if you can't get good sleep, you're you're not replenishing and healing and rejuvenating all the things in your body that need healing throughout the night, which is what we need sound to sleep for. So um, I can't tell you how many people have said that they sleep better after just two weeks into keto, which is mm-hmm. so much better. And when you can get sound sleep, then you're really on the on your way to some deeper healing in your body. So critical that you're getting good sleep. Um, and yeah, so anything else you want to add, Rosa? Well, the the only other thing is, uh, I mean, I've had this whole journey my whole life, and along with the keto, what is really helping me right now is um, kind of realizing that I have a choice that if with keto, if I say have some popcorn one day and and say exceed my um carb for the day it's like that's okay i can do that i can Mm -hmm. do that once in a while or if i'm at a celebration a wedding or something and i don't want to be rude and refuse everything um that's that's okay because i can do that and then the next day i know exactly what to do to get you know back into ketosis and not You know, in the past, it was like with a lot of diets, I felt deprived. And it was like if I messed up and ate one little thing that I, you know, in my mind, I wasn't supposed to. It was it was kind of devastating. Oh, I have messed it all up. Now I might as well eat a gallon of ice cream or something, Mm -hmm. which which is not a good thing to do. And it was um, it was very hard emotionally and psychologically to because it was like, oh, I failed, and uh-huh. I messed up. But with keto and where I am now, I don't feel like I, I don't fail. I don't mess up. And importantly is I do not feel deprived. Mm. I, I mean, I'm pretty good in the kitchen, and so if I want to have desserts, if I want to have cake, if I want to have ice cream, I can just Google a keto recipe for mm. ice cream. A keto recipe for um, carrot cake uh-huh. with cream cheese frosting, uh-huh. and so I don't deprive myself. And in fact, I need to have those things because I need to have those fat bombs in order to keep my calories up. Um, it I've replaced the carb calories with fat calories, and I am making sure that all of my fat calories are totally enjoyable. So mm. I am not deprived. If anything. I'm eating a lot more yummy, you know, desserty, you know, fat things than I ever did before, and and if I don't have enough of them, I I lose too much weight, so I have to have them. So this this is this is wonderful. This is something I could keep doing because I don't feel deprived mm-hmm. and I don't feel like I mess up. It's I, uh, I'm having a great time with it. That's such a great point you bring up so is it is it that you don't feel guilty it's like a less like guilt that you hold because you can indulge and you can enjoy and you 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 don't have to feel bad about it well it is there is a certain amount of guilt and there is I've taken away the the whole feeling of failure because Uh I ate one bite of cake right so that messes with me psychologically mm. if if I were to be still thinking that way um I don't think I you know it's not very fun no yeah no. nobody wants to live their life 
feeling like a failure and guilty about everything they do to sort of derail themselves. Right, and depressed about it and yeah. all the things that go with that. So yeah. it's it's all about the mindset and importantly having a, a food plan that works, which yeah. the keto does. So you brought up so many good distinctions. One is the emotional um, component that you, that you brought up, which is really, really important. And that is why restrictive diets are not sustainable in, in my experience because of the emotional trappings of them. Um, so with keto, the interesting thing is, is that if you don't get enough calories, you don't lose weight. You can stop, your weight loss can halt. Um, and then, of course, once you reach your goal weight, which I tell people the hardest thing about keto is keeping the weight on once you get to your goal weight. Um, and people don't really understand that until they quickly get to the point where they don't want to lose any more weight. And then you have to make sure you're getting enough um, healthy fat calories every day. So it's a, it's a complete mindset flip. And I do a great deal of setting the foundation for a new mindset and so that people can have success with this because if you're not willing to change your mind, it's almost impossible, I would say, to successfully sustain a dietary change or any change in your lifestyle for that matter. Um, so really, really important that you bring that up. Thank you, Rosa. I really appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I, I've i noticed just in uh, sort of observing you as we've, you know, have our social circles and whatnot that we mm -hmm. run into each other. Something that's uh, that I've noticed that seems different in you is just the way that your um, sort of energy is not so much the health and the vi vitality that type of energy, but um, I just I see you showing up so in so much more of a confident way and playful way and just um, really like a side of your personality and character that I never have seen before. And I don't know if it's related to keto or just we're getting older or what, but I've definitely noticed like a, a joyfulness or a more lightheartedness um, that sh it's very obvious. Well, I, yeah, I, I agree because it, I, I feel more confident. I don't feel um, inadequate like I did before because I, you know, weighed too much. My clothes didn't look right. I mean... It, that stuff seems trivial unless it's your stuff. Like, you know, it's my stuff. <laughs> yes, absolutely. That, you know, I you, I just didn't feel good, and, and then there's a slight depression with that. So how can I show up, you know, vibrantly and confident if I'm slightly depressed mm -hmm. over my appearance or my struggles with trying to keep the weight? Even when I was um, dieting and I was keeping the weight down, it, the struggle was still there mm. in my in my head, mm. um, so I probably didn't show up the same way I do now because I don't have that struggle. Mm. Yeah, that inner struggle was so it was so um, like I couldn't. It wasn't um, obvious to me until it's not after there. until it's not there. Yeah. yeah, what a lift! What a light enlightenment! It's it's extraordinary. Oh, you said that if you have an indulgence and you have some popcorn or you go to a wedding and you want to have something that's there, uh, either because you don't want to be offensive to the host or because you just feel like indulging that day, one of the beautiful things about keto is that we like to mimic the feast and famine cycle, right? So once you get to your goal weight, there are times and there should be times when you indulge. And is keto a forever lifestyle? People ask me that all the time. Oh my God, do I have to do this forever? Um, and I always say, no, you don't, you do it for as long as you want to. And when you feel like you want to indulge, then, then that's the time for you to do that. Um, and then you always know the way back. It's like a roadmap. And once you figure it out and you, and you have the results that you have, there's no putting the genie back in the bottle. So I always say, you're going to know the way back and you're going to know how your body feels when you do sort of indulge or go off the rails or have a, a, a time where you're feasting or, or maybe you're traveling to Europe and you want to have wine and bread or whatever. Um, these things happen. You know, this life, life moves us in ways and, and takes us to places where we want to have these experiences. And if, if we think that we have to do something forever, it's, um, 
it, it is kind of depressing. It's like, oh my gosh, I had a patient come in last week and say, I just can't do this forever. And this was somebody who was um, diabetic and then the blood sugars came back down to normal. Her ketones were 2.3, mm. her blood sugar was 67. And I said, you know what? You can't be miserable. Like if you're that uh, sad about, I said, you look terrible, what's wrong? And she said, I just, I just need some steel cutouts. And I said, great. She's at her goal weight. I said, go ahead and have those steel cutouts. As long as it's timed correctly, where you're, you know, we learn how to time our meals correctly when we do keto correctly. And if you time those things correctly, it's not a problem. You know, your, your metabolism is, is flexible and healthy and you can have these things on, on a semi-regular basis, you know, maybe once or twice a week, you feel like you're having, um, an indulgence or for some people it could be three times a week. It just depends on what your personal carbohydrate threshold is and how you feel when you, when you indulge and how quickly your body's able to, to come back into ketosis. So, um, this is something that everybody experiences once they reach their goal weight and then you get to see, okay, you know, what's best for me. Do I need my ketones to be in a more therapeutic range or, you know, up above three um, or not? And if you don't, and if you just want to maintain your blood sugar and prevent diabetes and not have to get on insulin and be able to maintain your ideal body weight, that's easy. <laughs> you know, that's, that's pretty doable for most people. So I've, I've seen just such extraordinary results um, that I, that I just love to talk about it and I love to share people's stories. So yeah, thank you so much for, for sharing your story with, with everyone, Rosa. I know it's going to be um, really impactful and really helpful for people. So so glad to be here. I just want to say, you're talking about feeling like I have to be on keto. My, my view of it is I get to be on keto. Mm, I don't have to. I get to. Yes. So. Perfect. That is the perfect ending to our podcast today. And yes, we are uh, blessed and grateful that we get to to live this lifestyle. It's abundant. It feels uh, opulent, even and delicious and simple, and um, it makes our life easier. And we we feel so much better. And parents out there, you can do this even with young children. And I highly encourage you to to bring more of these practices into your kitchen because you are teaching your kids and modeling for them how to have a healthy lifestyle and they are not going to learn this out in the world at school anywhere uh, media so bringing this into your own home is the first step in really transforming the next generation and they need our help so thank you all the parents out there that um that are being role models for their kids um it's really important so with no further ado i would like to close this um, session by just saying thanks for tuning in and listening again to the ketogenic diet show my name is mary beauchamp i'm a registered nurse therapeutic nutritionist and ketogenic diet coach you can find me at ketogenicdietcoach.com and you will also see lots of resources you can educate yourself and also join in any of the programs that i have available there to um, really start on the path to um, a healthy lifestyle. All right. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.